Ladies and gentlemen, you are most welcome to another Celebrity Journey program sponsored by UNAIDS. The host is Moses Supercharger. In the studios this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged and honored to have one of the best supersonic advocates in the country. Kenneth, you are most welcome. Thank you, and I'm delighted to be hosted on this marvelous show. Yes, Kenneth, tell me, what is HEPS doing in, in the response against HIV AIDS? Thank you uh, for the good question. Um, HEPS Uganda stands for the Coalition for Health Promotion and Social Development. Mm -hmm. As you hear us, we are health promoters and advocates mm -hmm. uh, for increased access to health services with a particular focus on promoting access to essential medicines. And uh, HIV is one of our core programs mm -hmm. uh, where we focus more on promoting access to uh, ARVs uh, and also access to quality services for HIV AIDS. That's amazing. Kenneth, tell me, are you married? Yes, I'm married uh, to one wife uh, and uh, we're also blessed with our three children. Amazing. There is a program going on by UNAIDS which says there is a possibility of ending HIV AIDS by 2030. And uh, to you as one of the best advocates, I want to understand from you, what is it that countries need to do to end HIV by 2030? Uh, thank you very much for that uh, question. Um, I must say there are two things here we are looking at. There is ending AIDS, there is also ending HIV. And yeah. Those are two different things. Uh, but back to your question of ending HIV, um, one, we are looking at uh, uh, the tremendous progress we have made, uh, meaning we have uh, a wealth of experience in implementing uh, HIV programs. Uh, secondly, we are looking at the technology we have, uh, and, and COVID actually has presented um, uh, has demonstrated that we can fast track actually ending um, HIV uh, by 2030 as well. Uh, we saw how fast they came up with a vaccine uh, for preventing um, uh, uh, COVID. Yep. Uh, and, and same as uh, HIV, we can use the same energy, the same urgency uh, to uh, invest in a cure. Uh, and at least we're seeing some light with a cure for mm. HIV. So. Um, with the technology and experience that we have and the tools we have currently, mm -hmm. uh, it's possible to end um, HIV, but also it's very even more possible to end AIDS uh, mm -hmm. by 2030. By 2030. Yes. Specifically, what do countries need to do? What are the gaps, really? Things that you see that and say, if you don't do this, you won't get to ending HIV by 2030. Uh, thank you for that question once again. Uh, one of the core things and what we are seeing now with the epidemic uh, response uh, is ending inequities. Uh, we are seeing even countries that are moving towards uh, ending AIDS. Um, we are seeing some subpopulations left out. Yeah. Uh, we are seeing, for example, adolescent girls and young women yeah. uh, having disproportionate um, uh, um, uh, transmissions mm -hmm. uh, as compared to the general population. Yeah. We are seeing key populations um, actually contributing about 60% of the new infections mm -hmm. uh, in those countries that we are looking up to. Mm -hmm. uh, so ending inequities, uh, we are seeing women as well are still bearing the face of HIV, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. So if we don't end those inequities, if we don't address uh, the causes of those inequities, the structural barriers causing those inequities, we won't end AIDS, even with technology, even with investments, as long as we don't address the inequities, we won't end HIV. And that's the one fundamental thing that the world has to first address mm. uh, to end AIDS. That's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, in the studios of the Stigmalist Band, we are hosting Kenneth Mwehonge. This program is proudly supported by UNEDS. Kenneth, the second question I want to pose to you. Uh, in Uganda, we usually get stockouts of antiretroviral therapy medications. As the grassroots person wants to know, what is the problem? Is there somebody who's supposed to do something and he doesn't do it? Because right now, as we speak, there is no Lartagrave, a very big component for people on third line medication. What is the problem? Why do Uganda usually have stockouts of antiretroviral 
therapies. Mm. For starters, we've come a long way in improving availability of uh, ARVs. Mm. Uh, we came from uh, a history uh, where uh, being on treatment was a privilege uh, for a few. Uh, we came from uh, a period where we had to unfortunately wait for people to die to, for us to enroll new people on treatment. Mm. However, that tide has changed and now we are looking for people to enroll on treatment. Mm. And uh, it's a shame that we are still having stockouts after all the investments in the supply chain. Mm. Um, but one of the leading causes, and uh, we, we are happy and we commend our government and development partners that it's not an issue of financing anymore that is causing stockouts. Yeah. And uh, currently what is really causing stockouts is the breakdown in the supply chain. What uh, exactly do you mean there? Um, so I, uh, one is, uh, you know, the lead time in terms of um, uh, procurement and, and having medicines uh, is between three to six months. Uh, and uh, if you don't have uh, good quantifications and forecasts, then you will definitely have uh, stockouts. Mm. And it's a shame in this era that uh, uh, we still experience stockouts, yet we have a good quantification program. Mm. Uh, uh, and maybe the, the, the bigger, bigger um, uh, reason uh, was we, we saw the competition between prioritizing uh, 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 pr uh, thera therapeutics for uh, COVID-19, mm -hmm. which sort of globally caused um, uh, a, a slowdown in production of medicines. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that said, uh, we should have done better. Uh, that's the biggest cause. And uh, also, we are seeing um, another cause of uh, shortages mm -hmm. uh, is the uh, shelf life of the medicines. Shelf life? Yes. What is uh, shelf life? So shelf life is um, what we call expiry dates of medicines. Okay. Uh, like example, the Royal Telgrava, um, you, you've cited as an example. Mm -hmm. I think we saw um, uh, before we ran out of stock, mm -hmm. we had um, a, a, a stock that was due to uh, expire. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was managed through the redistributions, which in increased on, on consumption. Mm -hmm. And uh, it didn't. But the point I'm making is that... Uh, uh, medicines have a short shelf life. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't stock, say, for example, medicines for many years because they, they will eventually expire. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is to do is managing the supply chain, ensuring that uh, what there's is there flow. is, yes, there is flow, exactly. Mm -hmm. What is there is consumed and there is uh, new medicines coming in mm -hmm. and that's how you manage it. And the, the moment there is any breakdown, and we saw that during COVID where transportation was difficult, the procurement teams first it um, uh, tough in terms of uh, forecasting and uh, the lead time actually changed from the normal. Mm. Um, so we understand that, but uh, uh, ARVs again being life-saving medicines and the example you're citing, it's a third line um, uh, medicine. Mm. Uh, I think we need, to, we can do better. We, we can we, do better. That should not happen. Wow, 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 wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Kenneth Mahonge. Kenneth Mahonge, another question which I want to post to you, actually the second last question. Um, Uganda is one of the countries with highest rates of HIV drug resistance. And yet the medications, as you have just put it, are there. What is the problem? We have over 100,000 Ugandans. The medications are not working for them. They are not virally suppressed. What is the problem? What, what causes this issue? So thank you for that question. And um, again, it's, uh, um, and this time it's uh, lack of uh, adequate investment in uh, uh, support systems. Yep. Uh, for example, you very well know our literacy levels, uh, uh, ART literacy levels of um, uh, our community uh, mm. on, on medicines. They are very, very low. Mm. And uh, that's one fundamental thing that uh, supports uh, adherence, mm. uh, helps avert um, um, uh, drug resistance. If someone knows very well uh, about their medication, how to take it, uh, the impact of not uh, taking the medication as well, um, that contributes uh, to, to improved uh, outcomes in terms of uh, uh, adherence to treatment. But what do we see? Um, I think it's only um, uh, lately that we are seeing uh, our government and development partners prioritizing treatment literacy, mm -hmm. but before, uh, even from our community-led monitoring results, they show very low literacy levels. And secondly, even the 
support uh, functions, mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing um, community support groups yep. uh, inadequately facilitated, uh, people not in groups, not aware of them, uh, even where they are, not functional. And those are the peer groups where you find peers that will support you, uh, adhere to your treatment, uh, will encourage you, inspire you. We know taking these tablets uh, daily is uh, it's something not easy. Um, but if you have a peer who inspires you, uh, um, that's when people adhere. But unfortunately, what are we seeing? Uh, these groups um, are not there uh, or where they are, not functional. Uh, and that it's different from what we used to know, the post-test clubs that we used to, we have, used to have, which supported people to adhere to their treatment. Mm. And uh, we see that even people who have been on treatment, who were enrolled those days, mm. they adhere to their treatment. It's because of the support uh, and process they went through, the preparation. Mm. But uh, the programs we've had now, like the test and start, mm. uh, people not well um, are counseled and prepared to start that long life treatment. Um, it's going back to the basics that uh, we need to improve. That. Wow, wow, wow. That's Kenneth. Kenneth, the last question. Um, I'm really concerned as a person who has lived with HIV for the last 30 years. 90% of the ARVs that we use in Uganda are bought by PEPFAR and other partners. My concern is that what can happen if America says no more ARVs to uh, developing countries? What do we need to do as a country to start laying ground for independence in terms of um, purchasing and managing these commodities? That's a brilliant question. And um, actually, if you look at, um, at the global landscape, um, uh, PEPFA is an emergency program. Mm. And uh, eventually it will have to end. Mm. And uh, we're already seeing those signals. Uh, so, and that takes back to uh, the first question on what countries need to do. Mm. One is full funding, commitment, funding commitment from governments. Uh, we appreciate our government actually over the last three years, they've increased their commitment in terms of funding of ARVs and I think we're moving towards um, a close to 50% uh, of the ARVs mm. now procured by our government. Uh, which we really appreciate, but we need full funding. Um, we have we have initiatives like the AIDS Trust Fund, mm -hmm. which has told, and those are some of the sustainable uh, sustainability uh, programs that can help uh, our government own the response. Mm -hmm. But without them offering financial commitment. Um, there is no way uh, we can sustain this epidemic. Like you rightly say, the PEPFA investing uh, still heavily uh, in the response. We need ownership. We need our government to take it up. Um, and the beauty is uh, there have been sustainability initiatives also between our government and those bilateral partners uh, that are supporting the program. So we need to take those commitments that um, they've committed to through those sustainability plans uh, to ensure that our government fully owns this response. Wow, 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 wow. That brings us to the end of our program, ladies and gentlemen. In the studio, I've been hosting Kenneth Mwehonge, one of the supersonic advocates in the country. If somebody tells you to write down five best advocates, health advocates in the country, and you bring that paper without the name, Kenneth Mwehonge, you have failed it. I'm telling you, he's one of the best five in the country. Thank you so much, Thank Kenneth you. Mwehonge. Thank you so much. I feel flattered by your comments yeah. and delighted to be here. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Your host have been Supercharger Moses in Suboga. May God bless you.